We're going to do cryokinetics. Cryo is cold. Kinetics is exercise or activities. Uh, cryokinetics is used best for joint injuries, acute joint injuries. So in this simulation, um, our patient has uh, sustained a, an ankle, ankle sprain. So uh, cryokinetics, uh, first thing that we're going to do for this one is we're going to use uh, ice immersion. So a, a cold bath, you could also use a cold whirlpool, but for this demonstration we'll, use a, we'll need an ice bucket and some ice. Um, we, also, we also already have our towel and our um, clock. We've looked at the patient's chart. Uh, so first we are, uh, we've also inspected the injured area already to determine what we needed to do. Uh, and also made sure that she has no contraindications for the ice treatment, such as uh, any allergic reaction. So, so first thing that we would do is put some ice in our bucket, and we'll leave that open to, to get some more later on. And then make sure that you're putting cold water in. And you also want to make sure that it covers the whole body part. So if it's not high enough, so we, we can put some more in. Let me, now before she puts it in, um, another thing that you want to remind her is that this is, you want to make sure that she has her towel ready and your timer set. Um, because um, this is cold water, um, about um, 60, 65 degrees. Um, temperature, so uh, you can also put on a toe cup, which I left in the other room. So these black toe, toe cups you can put on the tips of the toes to help it uh, feel a little bit better. And, uh, or you can use a sock, um, the end of her sock rolled up. And then you want to tell her to um, slowly put her foot into the water. Okay, and um, then you also want to set your timer for about uh, at least 20 minutes uh, initially because you might, you want to make sure that it goes numb, but some people vary in, in when they get numb, but just to make sure that she does get numb and, and that she, she gets a full treatment for the initial ice immersion, uh, I, I would leave her in there for 20 minutes. So. Uh, if the water, because um, you know, her body heat will actually warm the water, you can add more ice. Throughout the treatment, and you can tell the patient that, you know, to let you know if she, if she has any problems or... Uh, uh, another thing with ice immersions, especially if it's the first time, you may want to talk to her talk her through it just to kind of get her mind off the cold or pain that she might be feeling in the, in the injury itself. So you may talk about uh, warm things, you know, warm, you know, Hawaii or someplace warm that, to take her mind off, off the cold foot. Um, just, and there's other techniques that you can use. Um, but again, go at least 20 minutes. So at the end of the 20 minutes, so we're gonna assume that it's also that it's numb. She's going to dry her foot off. Go ahead. And we can move the water to the side. Because if, uh, if the pain returns or if the numbing wears off, we do want to make sure that she goes back uh, to the ice immersion to re-numb it. And you don't need to go the full 20 minutes after that, but just until she re-numbs. It might take uh, three to five minutes or a little bit longer. Shouldn't take much more than that. Uh, next, we're going to have the patient come up on the, the table and we're going to do some non-weight-bearing exercises. So, 
we're going to have her um, just do some passive passive range of motion. So she's going to uh, dorsiflexion and she's going to tell me when to stop. Stop. And again, she's passive and the pain, keep in mind that the pain may, may limit her. So again, she also, she also needs to be, remain passive. So I usually do about 10, 10 reps and then I'll switch uh, to inversion and eversion. Again, she's going to tell you when to stop. Again, because of the injury, she might have, she might tell you to stop quickly. Uh, another key thing is that you want to make sure that you're isolating the joint. You want to make sure that she's not using the whole leg for internal and external rotation. So you can stabilize the distal part um, when you're doing that. So you do 10, 10 reps, plantar and dorsiflexion, and then you're going to do 10 reps, inversion, eversion, and then go back to your second set for each of those and then your third set. After the passive, then you can do um, active range of motion. So she's going to go from uh, bring her in her foot up. Again, you may need to stabilize it to make sure that she does it correctly and you're watching it to the point of pain and down to the point of pain. Up, dorsiflex, down, plantar flex. Again, she's going to do 10 reps and then she's going to do inversion and eversion. Again, if she forgot, just remind her on her own and she's gonna and she can count with you if you want her to so she's gonna do 10 reps that inversion eversion and then you're gonna go back to your second set for active plantar flexion dorsiflexion same thing with inversion eversion and then a third set of plantar flexion dorsiflexion and a third set for inversion eversion after active then you can do resist it resistive so she's gonna pull against you as hard as she can to the point of pain and she'll say stop at the point of pain. Say it. Stop. So you're going to do the same actions. Stop. And then for inversion, eversion, you're going to do the same thing. Stop. Again, three sets of 10. The key thing is that you, pro uh, you can progress, you can increase the number of sets, you can do the, increase the number of reps that they do in each set. Um, so it's all a progression. Once she's comfortable doing the non-weight bearing, another non-weight bearing thing that we can do to work on strength is we, there are several different uh, surgical therabands that you can use. Uh, again, the, the same action that, that she did before. So she's gonna go up, down, and the key thing also that she goes down slowly. And then we can also do plantar flexion, and if she wanted to, she can actually hold the, if it's long enough, she can push it herself. Again, remind her to go down slowly. And then we can also do inversion. Again, stabilizing the joint. In, slow, out, slow. And then eversion. Or in, out, slow, in, slow. Again, uh, three sets of 10, gradually increasing that. You can also progress this by going from an easy uh, you get, there's a yellow one that's uh, easier than the red. You can go to the blue, or green, browns, uh, black, grays uh, to make it the resistant band um, harder as well. So if she needs to re-ice, then again you need to re you will uh, you put her back in the ice bucket for until she she re uh, before she goes to the weight bearing exercises. Um, but um, again, for time's sake, we'll just say that she does renumb it. Um, and then I'm going to have her stand up. The next thing that she's going to do is uh, heel raises. So she's going to go up slow, down slow. Again, you want to stay by her. Uh, you can make it really easy by having her go on uh, both down. Stay by her or have her hold on to the table if she needs to. If you had a gate belt, you can hold on to the gate belt. If she's okay doing it with both feet, then she can go on to the injured side. So again, up slow down slow and the progression here would be to increase the number that she does or if she's doing them in sets you can increase the number of reps and the number of sets uh, this is a flat floor uh, we can make this harder by um, adding different um, different types of um, surfaces to the ground to make it harder again she can do one foot same thing 
So you're gradually changing the surface. You're ma we're making it harder. That's our progression. Again, she's always going to use pain as a guide, so if she hurts... Okay, you can go ahead and stop. You can uh, always uh, change your... If it's too hard, you can reduce the number of sets that you're doing or she can ice it. We also want to do a heel cord stretch. Uh, so at the heel cord stretch, and she can d again do it. Start off with both feet, and then progress to one one foot. Uh, we can also do this on a stair. She can stand on a stair and just lean backwards to also help stretch the heel cord. Uh, she can do it on the floor. Uh, the key thing with this again is the number of reps and the length of time you can increase to make it harder for the heel cord stretch. After the heel cord stretch. Um, then uh, we can have her uh, walk, walk straight. Again, the key thing here, go ahead and turn around, is you're watching her. Again, she should have pretty good balance by now. Um, and if you needed to ice her before this, have her concentrate on heel to toe um, proper gait pattern uh, when she's walking. Again, you can start in small steps and then it, make it harder by making them larger steps. Okay, and then if she's okay straight, then we can uh, we can have her do uh, circles, and again because of space, we can have we can have her do uh, big circles. Big circles are going to be easier, and again you can have her change direction, and then smaller circles are going to be harder. You can either do circles or you can do a figure eight. It's the same principle. And then if she's okay with that, then, I, then the, the last one that we would do is a, a zigzag pattern where you're doing sharp turns, again, with the, the outside foot. And again, all this is walking. And then from here, again, I would re-ice it. And then after we re-ice it, then we're going to do some hopping. And with the hopping, I've created a four square on the floor. And with the four square, what she's going to do is she's going to first start off uh, on both feet. Again, if you need to uh, stay by her, that's fine. Um, or hold on to a uh, gate belt. Uh, what she's going to do, uh, you can instruct her to go from side to side. So she's going to go to the left and right slowly. Okay, stop. You're going to get tired. <laughs> okay, and then one foot. The injured foot, again, slowly, side to side. Again, you can count the number of reps that you do. Okay, that's good. And then you're going to have to go forward. So she's going to go forward. Again, you can start off with two feet and then go to one foot. Again, if she needs to stop and get her balance, that's fine. It's better to be safe uh, than injure herself again. Um, and then it, once she's fine going forward and backward and side to side, then you can have her do a triangle. So she's going to go up. If you, if you have these numbers, you can tell her what numbers to go and she's going to go forward. And then she's going to go side and then back to the first one. Okay, and again, have her get her balance before she goes to the second one. Side, back, hold it. And then again, you can increase the number of reps. You can do it a reverse pattern, um, and that's the, the four square. And then from there, then we can, um, after doing some hopping, then we can progress to doing some, uh, she can, uh, we won't demonstrate here. But you can have her jog the same patterns that we did with the walking. Uh, she could jog straight at 50% and then at 75%. Um, and then she could do a figure eight. Again, start off with the big one or circles, uh, big ones, and, and reverse the pattern to make it easier. And then make your smaller patterns for uh, circles or figure eight. Again, 50% and then 75%. And then, if you're, she's, and then while you're doing that, you want to make sure that she has her shoes on. Um, and if she, um, when she's doing that. And then the last one that we, we would do following the jogging would be uh, sprinting. So she would sprint at full speed, uh, both straight uh, and uh, it might be 10 yards or 15 yards, again, increasing the distance. Uh, again, figure eight, have her do a figure eight, big and then small is the progression. And then a zigzag pattern for the sprinting. After she's done the sprinting at full speed and you're comfortable with her progressing, then she can do sports specific skills. 
um, depending on her sport, her team that she she can do, uh, and maybe work with her coach coach to do uh, uh, sport specific drills. Those might be on a, a, a basketball gym or a, a foot uh, practice field outside, uh, and that's the that's the progression and uh, the and instructions that you use for cryokinetics. You can also tell her to, at home to make sure that she's icing and continues to ice it. 